The winter chores don't go away. Don't save them for another day. Don't despair, you can do it yourself. Let's go and see the wise old elf. Hiya, Joe. Well, I met oh, half, half past one now, mate. Half past one, bloody hell. I better get cracking. Um, Joe's just, uh, he's about to start doing the greenhouses. Um, cleaning them all up for winter. So all Joe does, Jay's fluid, brilliant, and a big slug, cold water. Big slug into the cold water. Into the cold water. But prior to that, I've just got this my little old knife that I can get under there between the panes. Are you with me? A thin bladed knife. So I've already got, got all the stuff that accumulates, you know, inside. Yeah, it's just basically dirt and bits yeah. of moss and what have you in it that come on. Then just scrape down the side. Right, melted. Because inside will be getting done later on. Yeah. And because the I mean, water butts collect all the rain off the greenhouse, I don't want the Jay's fluid water when it runs down going in the water. Into the, yeah, into the gutter and it goes so in. So all I've done is... Taking that out. I've just pulled the pipe off. Are you with me? Yeah. Because if I get Jay's fluid in the water, even though it might be there a while. I don't know how long it's going to... Yeah, well, on. yeah. You don't want it contaminated because you're using that water then for your, yeah. for your plants, aren't you? And this is just just a brush you would put on your horse pipe. Yeah, you for know, washing car and you what have you. Wash your car with it, whatever. And just something nice and firm to stand on. You've got to hop up there that he stood on. So I ain't going to fall. Painters and decorators and plasterers will know all about them. Yeah. It just keeps all the glassware nice and bright and clear. Well, it lets more light in as well. Yeah. And then hopefully, well, not hopefully, but the Jay's fluid will get all the bits of moss, you know, that's down the side. Yeah. And kill that. What is Jay's fluid? Is it like a disinfectant cleansing thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been going for years. Yeah, I know my granddad used to have it, my nan. Got a fabulous smell. Because if you're a certain age, you might remember a thing called Eisel. Medicated Eisel. Because when I was a kid, my mum, my gran, they all used Eisel for, you know, cleaning and disinfecting and doing all sorts of things. They used to have Eisel's, Eisel's uh, toilet roll, didn't they? Yeah. Medicated eyes. This was a bit like Grispoof paper, you know. <laughs> I remember you used to have it at school when I was a, a little kid. Medicated eyes. That'd keep your bum clean, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. Well, you see, Joe's work is working all in the corners, all down the, the framework. And that's all it is. So by the time I've finished and I've done inside and out, the glass will be absolutely clean. It's going to let more daylight in. Even though at the moment there's nothing left in my greenhouse apart from the grapevine. Yeah, everything's come out of the greenhouse now because that's going to also have a what was it called? A sulphur candle. It's a sulphur candle, Tony, yeah. That's uh, one for another episode, that. We might do that on Sunday, Sunday morning. Yeah. And all it is is a sulphur candle. And yeah. that is a. Um, it fumigates, doesn't it? So any pests and larvae that are knocking about inside the greenhouse, it kills them off. So maybe when I've done this, invariably you can always miss a little bit. The Jay's fluid might not kill absolutely everything, yeah? But it helps. That's more of a cleaner. Clean everything up nice and clean. Yeah. And then the sulphur candle then the sulfur kills candle, the bugs off, doesn't it? When we light the sulphur candle, all you do then, I'll put it in the middle of both the green houses. Yeah. On a, a brick or anything, just raise it off the ground a little bit. We'll light the candle. But it's not like firework night where you have to run. We just light the candle. Light the blue touch paper. Make sure the opening vents are closed. Yeah. Shut the greenhouse door, and that'll probably take 12 hours then. Get it as airtight as you can. Yeah, and then the fumes off that 
as it rises and hits the roof, it'll start circulating round. Kill, every, kill all the bloody pests off. Yeah. Doesn't get rid of slugs though. I've just been mauling. I've just been saving mauling with the bloody slugs. The slugs are a pest. So uh, we'll be showing you the salt trick, I think, later on down the down the line, well, won't we? We can try it. That we were talking about before. Joe's must be giving us a top tip on the salt. We'll show you that on a different uh, a different upload. But yeah, it's just a matter of cleanliness is next to godliness, isn't it? And taking care. And it's all part of your winter prep, even though. It's winter now, I haven't got much in the ground at all. No. I've got leeks in, I've got sprouts in. Uh, the raspberries are coming towards the end. So they're due for being cut back hard. Whether I do that Sunday or not has to be decided yet. Yeah. But this is just one of the winter jobs. An invaluable job as well. Well, it's not just not coming up. If you're keen and you do everything you do, it's just a, a good winter job. It's good husbandry of your plot, isn't it? Taking care, yeah. looking after it. And if you don't look after it and keep on top and maintain, you're just storing up problems. Well, that's it, mate. Nobody's going to clean them for you, are they? Oh, no. And it's a bit like it's one of my pet hates. When we go round, as we did on Tuesday, and we do, you know, the plot, plot inspections. inspections, yeah. You've only got to look at some some of the greenhouses, and the green, and I can just never understand people. So you never think of. It's the, the, the moss and the verdigris, the verdigris that builds up. Yeah. The muck. And the algae. So the well, that's it. The green, the green that comes on it, because I. I Took a leaf out of your book last year and I gave it a right good clean at the beginning of the year inside there. Got got rid of every scrap of the algae that was in there. Yeah. And it does pay off because as I say, the, you're saying there that the sunlight gets in, you get the clearer light going through there, which is exactly what the plants want. Yeah. And less pathogens from your from your muck. That'll be like a new pen in a bit, that won't it, mate? Well yeah, once I've done Inside as well. Yep, inside and out. Inside and out. And just work. You can smell that like it, is, it does smell like the Eisel. I remember the Eisel. Medicated Eisel. Smells clean, doesn't it? Smells like an yeah. hospital. But I'll walk in the house later on, your mugs will set to it. You stink, you're not going in like that. Because before now, when I've walked, Oh, I've got to the back door, park in the drive, go in the back way, and she'll take one look at me and say, you're not coming in like that? And I end up stripping down to my duds, not to criticise, leaving all this dirty stuff. In the lobby? No, outside on the patio. Are you with me? Yeah. And she'll come down, or she'll get me a clean pair of trainers or a pair of pants and whatever it is, and then I'll put them on outside. And then you're allowed back in. Then I'm allowed back in. Right, quite the right. Then is because head office says he's going to have a shower. Are you with me? Yep. But that's what she can do because she's the boss. De muck yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit like I'm the boss here, but at home I have to do what I'm told when I'm told. Well, if I don't, I get in trouble. Right. Rightly so. Right then, relative. We'll have a proper catch up on Sunday if you want, my mate. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see where we're up to for Sunday. Yeah, we'll show, we'll show them the magic candle. Yeah. Right, thanks very much, mate. Catch you soon. See you later on. Ta da, Paul. Hello, Joe. Morning to all on Sunday. What are we on with today, Paul? Well, as you can see, it looks a mess at the moment. I'm taking the raspberry canes down. Autumn treasure, just finished flowering, so now they go down to the ground. So as they've been growing up, the posts have what were the lines around them just to stop them falling over because they get that tall. And that then, sort of pens them in, doesn't it? Yeah, that? it just pens them in. So now, down to the ground, four or five inches, whatever. 
And you just do that with the autumn ones, not the yeah. summer? You don't do that with summer ones, because autumn ones, this is all grown this year. From nothing, from the stumps. Yeah, so that comes up from the fresh every year. So these have all been chopped in now, four or five inches. I'll clear all the detritus, that's a good word way to The detritus. Yeah. For all that growth you can see there now that's coming down. It'll come again next year from nothing. So There's no raspberries left at all really on them, is there? the odds and sods, Tony. But that five, six foot growth has all come from nothing. And the same will happen again next year. Right. So now it's completely clear the bed, cut it down, clear all the dead leaves and whatever, and that is it. Right. It'll get some manure as a winter feed and it'll get fed in spring. But that's all you do with late fruiting raspberries. So it's just a, a, a sprinkling of well rotted manure. Yeah. But clear it all completely down to the ground and that is it. Right. You don't need to do anything else. Simple as that. Now, your summer fruiting raspberries, yeah. they only flower on what was last year's new growth. Right. Okay. So, with summer fruiting raspberries, they've grown, but the, the raspberry themselves was on the previous year's cane. Right. So, with those, what you would do is cut out the old one and leave the new growth on. Because the new growth on summer raspberries is your fruit for next year. It's basically that simple. But with these, all we do is get the secateurs. Help me not showing my ass to the world. <laughs> You're doing that. I'm, I'm just stood here. And then, so you trim them all down. To about five inches like you've done there, four or five inches. Four five inches. Oh, there's only a few left now, so that'll take ten minutes. And then that's it, it'll down take, to the ground. It'll take a bit longer to clear away and get rid of all my old ties, but that's a nothing job. Now, when we was on the other day, I'd cleaned the greenhouse. Correct. And I'd got the jays fluid, I'd cleaned the greenhouse inside and out. So what I've got is a little fumigating candle and if you want to switch that off for so Joe's uh, cleaned all the inside and outside of the glass it's all nice and clean and sparkling there's a bit of, bit of uh, mist on the inside of it that's because it's a cold morning it was warm in there. A bit of what moisture. I'm going to do now is just a sulfur candle yeah a sulfur candle a sulfur candle and this is just to light up and surprisingly when you open it people think of candles as candles But inside is little individual oh, little beads, isn't it? Little beads, yeah, little sulfur beads. So all we do is just bury that as deep as we can, yeah. Right. So it's just like just like a wick. So all we're going to do now is put that on a brick, only because it'll get reasonably warm, you with me? Yeah. So the idea now, we're going to light the candle, yeah, light the wick, the opening lamp is closed, the vents. Yeah. We're going to close the door where you are, so all the fumes, all the vapour, all the sulphur that is in there, over the next 12 hours is going to go completely in here. Yeah, and fumigate it. Right, so you leave that burning in here for 12 hours, the fumes then yeah, this, kill off any bugs that are knocking around. This stays now. That lit. Yeah, I've never heard of a sulphur candle. But yeah. uh, it's an old tried and true true method, isn't it, the fumigation. So, so all that's going to happen now is as that gets down to the crystals itself the crystals will start to melt here we go you can smell the sulfur now can you the eggs i'm getting away from eggy smells eggy smells but that stinks now 
So all we're going to do now is leave that now. Close everything off. Close everything off. And that is it. You see there, the tape is smoking. That'll yeah. carry on burning that. So that'll, so that'll probably take a good 12 hours, Tony. Right. No problem. So that's one greenhouse now. And that'll get completely fumigated out. So anything, well, we've killed all the, not all the moths, but we've cleaned the glass inside and out. We've got rid of most of the dirt, most of the bits of, of algae. So that now is for the insects and bugs, because we all get ants and aphids and spiders and whatever it will be, and that is to completely sterilise my greenhouse. Sorted. And that is just one little job left. So suppose then in springtime it's just a bit of a wipe, quick, quick wipe over, isn't it? Wipe it's... over the clean. And it's just, it's, there's your lighter back, it's just another one. And the, the only other little job I'll do quickly, the espalier up here. Hang on a sec, I'll just do. Uh, Joe's going up to the espalier now. Because right. you were chopping your trees down yesterday, weren't you? This is just a grease band. You can buy them anywhere. But this one is just called Boltac Grease Band. Yeah. Yeah. Ants, earwigs, aphids, uh, caterpillars, whatever will... Come up and jump. Come up and eat. This is quite simply a little sticky grease band. I'll just do the one while it's raining. that because the babe came yesterday and took a pumpkin home so it's just a matter of cut a length off oh, that's a sticky it is a sticky that's band isn't it sticky 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 peel it this one in particular you just peel it in half there's what's left of last year's. Right. So all we're going to do now is just literally put that render sticky side on the outside. Yeah. Okay. It comes with a little bit of bit twine. Of bit of string. And all we're going to do now is just tie this. That's just to hold it in place. That's just to hold it in situ. Might be enough left. So the idea with this is anything that would crawl up from the ground, yeah? Yeah. Now has to climb over. The sticky. And of course its little legs will get trapped on the and sticky and it won't be able to get up with it. Just trim the ends off, strike over, give it a haircut. And that's all it is. So yeah. all, so all my espalier now we're gonna get treated the same. So there's these two here. And there's, and there's two over there. Two over there, there isn't it? Yeah. Two central ones here to this bed. Yeah, yeah you can see where the, where the old stuff's on there, Paul, yeah. yeah. Very good. Well, everything is just prevention, Tony. And, you know, you, I've grown stuff in the past and it's not worked and I've had fruit trees in the past. And because stuff's got at them, at first you don't know why. But it's prevention again. Yeah. So that can stay there now all winter and as the little rascals are climbing up they're still looking for food or fruit or a hiding place or a new home in the crevices and the cracks between all the the arms yeah well they aren't going to get at it this year because they're all going to get stuck down there yeah and that'll last me all through winter so basically all the creepy crawlies will be prevented from access right, up to yeah. the up to the fruit by that so that was a little one Today's job, because I always come up with like a plan, something to, to do. 
this will take all my time this morning getting the raspberries going and clearing away. Yeah, and cl yeah. clearing that bed and tidying that bed. So the greenhouse is being fumigated and that's what I'll do to my fruit trees. And it's all autumn winter preparation. It's all winter prep, yeah. For a good harvest next year. And I've, early on this morning, I've put me in the other bed at the side there, you can see the little sticks with the poppers on. I've just put my winter onions in and my garlic. So, this had all been raked and cleared. It had had a little bit of manure. So just from the back down to here, yep. is the winter onions, the sensei. Right. And then from here then to the next one is me. Pink germidor. That's my pink germidor. And this one is my Casablanca. So uh, winter onions, senshu, Japanese. Pink germidor, overwintering garlic. And the Casablanca, Casablanca overwintering garlic he's got in there. And the plan with those is now they're in. I know it's, it's a cold, it's a damp morning. But they'll all just get the roots down now. Yeah. yeah? So it's now 25th of October. So they'll all get the roots down, yeah? Whether it takes them four or six weeks, doesn't matter. So they'll get the roots down, the roots will get a hold. Uh, it'll be dark at five o'clock tonight, and it's going to get shorter days dead quick. And the idea being to get the roots down, they've got a hold. Winter will come along, the cold, the frost, and the shutdown. Yeah. But because the roots under the ground are established, they're yeah, still alive. They're there for next spring, so they can shut down, switch off, come March, then up the start coming through because the roots are established. Yeah. And that's my early, on my early onions and my garlic ready for next year. And, and they get, they're ready for around about May, June, aren't they? Yeah, just depending on the weather they get. Yeah. Because we can't cheat nature. Nature's always going to win, but we have to work around it with it and just try and try. So, anyway, exactly. that's that here and done. Belted. But I want to get that finished. Well, thanks very much, Joe. Yet Thank again, top tips from the wise old elf. And uh, we'll cold, see you. Yeah, cold wise old elf, so it's probably now a coffee and a fag, what do you reckon? I think that's a belting idea. Let's then. have a coffee and a fag, then I can carry on. <laughs> yeah. All right, mate. See you in a bit. There you go. That's B and M bargains, and it's six ninety nine. According to that, Helen got some the other day, and I'm sure she said it was seven pound fifty. But that might be the online price. Don't know. Six ninety nine, James Fluid. If you look on all the other sites, it's at least a tenner. I can't find it cheaper than that. So, um, yeah. And that's the same one that Joe was using there, the Dead Fast Greenhouse Smoke Fumigator. £6.49 that from Marshalls online. Marshalls, grow with us. Let's see if we can find a, another. Uh, Six spot in, and that's a different one. Yeah, seven forty nine. Go away. Yeah, so have a look about online, see what you can find. Yeah, so I've been Guru Mafinda. You've been fantastic, beautiful and fragrant as always. If you're a lady, you've been masculine, virile and forthright. If you're a man. And if you're something in between, well, you're something in between those, aren't you? Uh, I'll see you next time. And remember, keep growing with your head down. Get onto your winter chores. And uh, do it with a smile on your face. I'll have a proper smile. Hopefully tomorrow, because I'm going to the dentist's in the morning um, to get a new tooth. But um, anyway, that's fingers crossed, isn't it? Hopefully you'll see that. I'll look more human and, um, and less like a tusk, a tusk missing walrus. Anyway, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. This is Gorma Finder signing out. And remember, we love you all. Take care, boys and girls. Bye-bye.